A string of defections over the last year has further exposed the fraudulent case against Chevron in Ecuador. Many who were once in the plaintiff's close-knit inner circle have now turned on them by detailing their first-hand knowledge of the fraud. It is now undeniable that the plaintiffs simply could not build a case on facts, so they fabricated what they needed. As the plaintiff's lead American lawyer Stephen Donziger was caught saying in outtakes from the movie Crude. Facts do not exist. Facts are created. <laughs> That's Ann Mace to Stratus Consulting, who the plaintiffs described as a national authority on environmental chemistry. She and Stratus Executive Vice President Doug Beltman admitted that Stratus actually wrote much of the so-called Ecuadorian Independent Report that was supposed to provide a scientific basis for the judgment against Chevron. In April of this year, Beltman and Maist not only admitted their involvement in producing the report, but also renounced all of the scientific findings and conclusions it contained. Stratus is not aware of any scientific evidence that people in the former concession area are drinking water contaminated with petroleum. At no time while working on the Ecuador project did I see any data supporting a finding of groundwater contamination. I am not aware of any scientific data that shows any adverse health effects are caused by contamination from petroleum operations in the Oriente. I disavow any and all findings and conclusions in all of my reports and testimony on the Ecuador project. I deeply regret that I allowed myself and my company to be used in the Lago Agrio litigation in the way that we were. And David Russell, who served as their lead scientist, testified in May 2013. I had seen no evidence of any widespread contamination, and there was no evidence linking residents' health problems to Texaco operations. I am confident that the damages number in the judgment has no basis in fact. In other words, the Amazon Chernobyl advertised by the plaintiffs has been a fraud and a fabrication from the beginning. For-profit lawsuit investors have also deserted the plaintiffs and their law firm Patton Boggs, claiming the conduct discovered amounts to fraud. Finally, former Ecuadorian judge Alberto Guerra has provided evidence that the judgment against Chevron was actually written by the plaintiff's lawyers, including Pablo Fajardo, in return for a half-million-dollar bribe to Nicolas Zambrano, then the presiding judge in the case. Bank deposit slips, computer records, and other evidence corroborate Guerra's testimony. Eight federal courts that have reviewed the mounting evidence have found probable cause to believe that the Lago Agrio trial was tainted by fraud. As to the Ecuadorian judgment itself, a federal court in Maryland stated, Chevron has shown to anyone with common sense that this is a blatant cut and paste exercise. As Bloomberg Businessweek recently commented, bit by bit, the largest environmental verdict in history is disintegrating. And that Chevron has produced some impressive evidence that the historic $19 billion oil pollution verdict it faces in Ecuador floats on a lagoon of lies and corruption.